Welcome back, friends, to the shop. I've got a very interesting video for you guys today. I want to share with you uh, the vice that's going to be going on the new bench. And this, of course, is a vintage three and a half inch Wilton bullet vice. There's something about these. They have such a cult following and, and they just resonate with so many people. One of my subscribers uh, posted on the comments when I put this up on Instagram that this looks like something that would could survive a nuclear blast, right? When you look at this and just the shape and the dimensions of it, there's something about it that just is so satisfying and so pleasing. It just screams 1950s, doesn't it? I'll give you a little brief history on the, on the Wilton Company, uh, a little bit about these, and then we'll assemble it because it, it is in its disassembled state right here, and we'll talk about it a little bit. So the Wilton Vice Company started right around at the beginning of the war in 1941, and I think the guy who started it was Czechoslovakia, and he was an immigrant, and he designed, uh, created and designed this, um, and it was only made available to the military during the war effort, primarily to munitions companies uh, and the war effort. They weren't available to sale uh, to, to normal folk, right? Well, at the end of the war, as you know, um, all of that, a lot of that surplus and in the, in the stockpiles of tools and supplies that the U.S. government purchased, they went to sale at auctions. That's why my granddad had one of these on his bench that was uh, was d received or bought at an auction from the government. I remember growing up looking at it, the Wilton Machinist Vice, as well as his block and tackle, which I've used in, in previous videos. Kind of a fun fact, the Wilton name came from the name of the street that the original company was located in Chicago. And if you see one that is stamped uh, Chicago, from what I've read, that would be one of the original ones that was built in the 40s, and then they moved on um, and produced them here in Schleler, Schleler? Or, or whatever. You can date these old Wiltons. Unfortunately, this one you can't. I don't know why it doesn't have stamp, but from what I've read is there'll be a, a date. They'll have the month and the year on the bottom. And that the early ones that that date was actually five years ahead of the time that it was manufactured because they had, a, I think, a five-year warranty or, or something to that effect. Interesting, very interesting company. Also, a you know, fun fact is that when the government started to dump these on the market, they produced so, or they purchased so many of them during the war effort, it almost bankrupted the company because they were selling them for so cheap that the, com the Wilton company couldn't couldn't, no, couldn't produce it. And they're still in existence today. I don't know if they're uh, at the same level. I know they produce a lot of low-end, lower quality things, but you can still get parts for them. And the fact that I was able to order some Wilton made in Chicago soft copper jaws for it, you know, testifies to the fact that they're still producing quality. So are the good ones as, or the new ones as good as the old ones? I don't know. I haven't seen the new ones, but the old ones are magnificent. So just a couple of interesting things about it. What makes these a little bit different than the other ones is the um, precision of them and, and also the, uh, the screw. Of course, the, the, uh, the main screw in a lot of our vices uh, is exposed and these are all hidden inside the vise so that uh, it protects it from grease and chips and, and the mess. And they just have just legendary status and for their precision and they're just beautiful, beautiful little vices. I mean, the fact that this was probably built sometime in the 60s or 70s, uh, and here we are talking about it today and excited about it today is a testimony to uh, the quality of them. Listen to this. This is the precision. I was reading on, the, on their website, they said that they, this keyway right here, this is a broached keyway, is so precise that they milled them to from the factory at two thousandths of an inch, and when you see when you feel one, if you ever get one that's in good condition, then this one's in remarkable condition. No twist in it, no wiggle. They really are. They really are extraordinary vices. So let's take a close look at this one, uh, and then we'll assemble it, and then we'll wrap things up. When I was considering how I wanted to set up the new workbench, I knew I wanted a small vise on it. Now I've already have I already have a large version of this on the Snap-on vise on my fabricating bench. It's labeled Snap-on, but it's it's a it's a Wilton vise. Um, I knew that I wanted the small one, a three and a half inch. Now when you hear that three and a half inch or five or six, it's the width of the jaws. I used to think that it was how far that it opened, um, but that's not the case. It's the width of the jaws, and this is a three and a half. They actually make one smaller than this. They make a real small one that's a two inch and they're really rare and they're expensive. Even in unrestored condition, they're in the $700, $850 range needing restoration. 
what I was fully intending to do is, as I was going to go on eBay, and I was going to try to find one that needed restoration, and I was going to do a, a, a whole series, you know, do a whole video on it, you know, taking it apart and cleaning it and restoring it. And as I was searching, I was about ready to pull the trigger on one. This one popped up, and it was completely restored, and it was about seventy-five dollars less than the ones that were all greasy and grimy. And uh, I contacted the seller, and he said he didn't change any of the original parts. The only thing that he changed in this was the he put new cap screws here uh, for the jaws. But look at the cross hatching on the hardened jaws right there. Th this is all uh, original. And you'll see that it's not beat up. If you look on here, it hasn't really been abused. The worst thing I could find on it is there's a little bit of scratching right there. But the gentleman just did a beautiful, beautiful job on the restoration of it. And man, I jumped on it. Um, I think when it was all said and done, this was about $350. Uh, which is about half the price of buying a new one, and just gorgeous. I I wasn't sure if they came in this original, if they if they'd ever come in this original copper color, and I looked into it, and I don't think that they did. But I don't mind it. It has a it's a, just a hammered paint that looks gorgeous. He did a very nice job. Look at the back here. Of course, there's a small anvil on the back, and if these have been abused and really beat on, you know, this will be chipped up and there'll be big dents in it. But this has been, I mean, it is just in pristine condition. Also looking at the screw, you can see there almost no wear on it. The handle has not been really abused. You need know, little scuff marks and such, but overall, I mean, just gorgeous condition. So I, I, uh, I just couldn't refuse it. I couldn't date it. I can't really date it. It could be anywhere from the anywhere from the 50s up to the 80s, maybe 70s. I, I don't really know. It doesn't really matter. This is a swivel base, so you can get them swivel base or without swivel base. And for me, having it for gunsmithing and stuff, being able to rotate that around uh, was really important. But if you do buy one of these that doesn't have the swivel base, the swivel base will look like this. Uh, don't worry about it. For $150, you can still order those from Wilton. Uh, they're still available. All the parts still av available for this, but very, very nice. All right, let's put it together. I've got all the parts laid out here. There's really not much to them. Uh, we've got the base. Uh, we can see here this is a rotating base with the teeth that line up there. Those lock in there, so when you tighten it down, we have the uh, uh, carriage bolts here that go into the... Uh, a little sliding T handles that lock everything down. There's a center pin uh, for the rotating, and then there's a retainer clip, a C clip there uh, that keeps that screw from going in. So there's really not that much to it. I I, I, don't, I usually grease these. I don't have any grease. I don't well. I don't know where it's at in the move. So we'll just use some ballastol and some croil and just wipe everything down. But very simple, easy to restore. You can break it down further than this. There's actually. Um, two pins. You can drive these pins out in this dust cap in the back here uh, and take out that screw, uh, but there's no need to. Be careful when you're knocking these out. You can see that someone put dents in that right there uh, by using, it's kind of a thin dust cap. You want to use a big wood dowel and knock that out and if you want to go that far in a, in a restoration. But I can just simply start working on this base right here. Now We've got a ballastol infused rag right here. We'll just wipe everything down. This is not going to see super heavy duty. It's going to be in a reasonably clean environment. A beautiful, elegant design. You know, design reaches its uh, perfection when you can achieve the job that needs to be done with the least amount of pieces. <laughs> I think that's why Italian food is, you know, I love Italian food so much because it's so good and so with so few ingredients. This is a little pin here that keeps everything in alignment. I'm not sure which way the knurling, there's got knurling on there, which way that needs to go. Well, there we go, we have our answer. It can only go that way. Oil. It's a great oil. They call it the oil that creeps. It's a very thin oil. Actually, put a little on there. It gets into nooks and crannies.
if you look on the screw here, there's a keyway cut in there. And then this is the retainer that's held in with the Phillips screw. Even the screws are just mint condition. Nothing wrong with them. I feel very lucky to be able to find one in such good condition. Look at the lockup on that. Just absolutely gorgeous. There's nothing like a bullet vise. <laughs> really is a beautiful, beautiful piece of equipment. Now I, uh, I think I showed you here. I did, uh, I wanted some soft jaws for this and I was, remember, so we had these, we had, when I went to high school, we had a really great, um, a metal shop, I guess, for lack of a better words, before they took it all out. Uh, and they had vices like this, and we had a great teacher uh, who was a machinist, and I remember he, he, we had these. These are copper, 100% copper soft jaws, and these are the, uh, the correct ones, the, full, the three and a half inches from Wilton, and how these work. And we'll put these on once we get the bench installed, is that you uh, clamp them in here, and these long these long arms right here bend down around like that and so that it holds them in place so when you're using the vise they're not falling out all the time um, that way you can grasp things that are delicate because copper is so soft it wasn't it won't mar everything up but these these things are expensive I went online to find them I was thinking they would be like 30 bucks or so they're like $95 from Wilton I found a set on eBay brand new for 42, which I still thought was exorbitant, but uh, man, oh man. One final thing, um, I was, one, one of the things that I coveted, uh, my old neighbor Henry, who was an incredible machinist mechanic, on his bench, he had a vice similar to this, it was a bigger one, is he had a big old chunk of steel. <laughs> it was just like this. Mine's actually, I think it's the same size. If I have to go off memory, I think his was 12 by six by two, a solid steel and it was highly polished and he would use it just as a benchtop anvil. Whenever you needed, you know, something with some serious mass uh, to pound on or to, to punches, it was just something that I, I, I tried to buy it from him and he said, no, that's already been promised to someone else. So I found one on eBay and this sucker is heavy. <laughs> I don't know what it weighs. Uh, maybe one of, some of you engineers can figure that out, but what solid steel weigh at uh, two, by, two inches by six by 12? Um, but that's pretty cool. So that's going to sit on the bench as well, having a nice solid surface to, to, to work on, and we'll get a nice polish on that. But that was uh, that pretty much makes it up. And I'm going to have a good hard rock maple countertop, uh, which will be here soon. We'll install all that together. We'll put the vise on uh, with the big steel uh, bench anvil, and man, oh man, we are going to be in good shape. Well, that's probably all the time we have for today. It's probably a long video. If you want one of these, this, this size, this is the three and a half inch. I jump on eBay quick because they're gonna be gone soon. Um, and there's a, there were quite a few of them on there uh, when I was looking at mine, uh, but they're gonna be in the $400 range. But this is one of those tools that uh, will be handed down uh, to multiple generations. Uh, to me, some people say, oh, that, that's a lot of money. But when you've worked with one of these, I, and I've worked with the big one, compared to, uh, just the Chinese overseas made vices, um, not to be compared, not to be compared. This is a place you, uh, you want to spend your money. This is money in the bank. It'll be worth probably more than what you paid for it um, in, a, in a year from now. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, I invite you to click the thumb up, uh, thumbs up to share the videos. Always appreciate your comments and we always appreciate your prayers. So keep my family in your prayers. May God bless you and your families, and we'll see you guys on the next video.